it was a rush of deals on Thursday night as the summer transfer window came to a close. Let's take a look now at some of the deals that happened on deadline day. Uh, Chelsea wrapped up a late move for Leicester midfielder Danny Drinkwater at the end of a nerve jangly deadline day. It is understood the fee is £35 million, while Leicester are confident they have completed the signing of Adrian Silva from Sporting Lisbon before the deadline. A day for a fee believed to be £22 million. Pounds. Paris Saint-Germain have announced the signing of Kylian Mbappe from Monaco. The 18-year-old striker joins on an initial season long loan deal and will sign a permanent four-year contract next July when PSG have the option to make the transfer permanent for a fee understood to be worth £166 million. Pounds. Tottenham have signed forward Fernando Llorente from Swansea on a deal which runs until 2019. Sports reportedly beat Chelsea to the signature of the 32-year-old who has been capped 24 times by Spain. Mamadou Sako is back at Crystal Palace after the Eagles signed him from Liverpool in a £26 million deadline day move. Everton midfielder Ross Barkley rejected a £35 million move to Chelsea after changing his mind during his medical. The 23-year-old uh, had begun his medical only to have second third and opted against the move, but a source close to the player has since denied that he had a medical. Chelsea and Atletico Madrid will hold more discussions uh, today as they look to wrap up a deal for one away striker Diego Costa. Although the transfer window in England concluded on Thursday night, the Spanish window remains open until midnight today. Liverpool also completed the £35 million signing of England midfielder Alex Oxley Chamberlain from Arsenal, the 24 year old who rejected a move to Chelsea on Tuesday after a fee had been agreed, joins on a five year contract worth £120,000 a week. Tottenham also completed a deadline day signing of Sergei Auré from Paris Saint Germain for a fee in the region of £23 million. The Ivory Coast right back signed a five year contract until 2022. Uh, well, the summer transfer window came to a close. Uh, on Thursday uh, night, uh, but some clubs still have until had until 11 p.m. on Friday, uh, 1st September, to complete deals. Uh, players who are free agents are still able to join a new club. We now switch uh, to Chelsea defender on loan at uh, Kassin Pasadas in Turkey, uh, Kenneth Omero. Uh, hello, Kenneth. He joins us now uh, via Skype. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very fine. And you? <laughs> All right, I, we understand you are one uh, player uh, that always seemed to be, uh, you know, to make a move during the transfer window. How has this summer uh, played out for you with uh, you moving to Turkey? Um, this summer has been, you know, strange uh, because at first I wanted to stay in the UK and uh, some deals didn't, didn't go through, you know, and um, I had, I had um, a last minute offer from... Uh, Kasim Pasha, which is a team that I know very well, and uh, I thought it's an upgrade from from my team from last year, you know. And uh, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy this move worked out. Okay, as a player, what are your thoughts on the huge transfer fees these days? <laughs> no, it, it, it's it's crazy. You know, it's crazy. Um, Neymar going to going to PSG. It was. What? was something unbelievable, you know, the price was... About 200 million pounds. Sometimes I wish I'm a striker, you know. <laughs> of course, you could still, you could still switch. No, it's too late it's now. It's too late, <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. But really, do you think these uh, players are, are really worth, you know, those kind of monies? Um, I know Neymar is a, is a great player, you know, but... That fee for me, I think, is too much, and uh, it has actually raised the transfer transfers this season because um, every club now <clears throat> raised the standard of you know how much they want to sell their players, mm -hmm. and they they feel if this player can go for two hundred million, then you know we can get hundred and something for for another good player. It, it raises the question. So this season has been crazy. <laughs> It raises the question as to how much the likes of uh, Ronaldo and perhaps Messi will cost. And uh, we heard Roy Kane come out to say that some players would have cost like two billion, one billion in this if they were available in this current transfer window. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what... exactly. Uh, like Ronaldinho, I'm sure he would have cost three hundred million. <laughs> <laughs> what transfer really has particularly amazed you the most this summer? I think it's uh, the Neymar transfer. Okay. It was it was something we've, we were following back 
when I was in the training ground at Chelsea. You know, everyone thought it wouldn't happen, and then all of a sudden, you know, it happened, and we're like, wow. <laughs> it, was, it was indeed a wild trans transfer, and perhaps that of uh, Kylian Mbappe moving to Paris Saint-Germain <laughs> on loan. Well, no major moves for Nigerian players uh, in the current, uh, in the outgone window, I should say. Do you buy the opinion uh, suggested in some quarters that Nigerian players are no longer attractive uh, to prospective buyers? Oh, no, I don't. I don't buy it at all because, um, first of all, we have to look at the the difficulties to sign, especially Nigerian players who haven't played in the national team um, up to the certain percentage that is asked, that is required by FIFA. We have great talents, but like in England, you cannot you cannot sign a player who hasn't play, featured for the national team for a while, and even now. You know, the national team have to be on the FIFA ranking. You have to be among the 50, first 50 countries. So this is really affecting our Nigerian players because it's difficult to... We have so much players in Nigeria, so it's not possible to play everyone in the national team up to that amount. And also in, in Holland, you have to pay a certain amount of money to get foreigners in. This is also a problem because a lot of clubs cannot afford the players, so they will rather pay less to get the players, but they can't do it, so they will stick to the foreign players. So we've got the talent and everything, but it's just the rules in in those leagues that is stopping this, stopping us basically from from signing clubs out there. Uh, uh, all right, uh, before I let you go. Uh... You were placed on standby. Nigeria will play Cameroon today in a uh, World Cup qualifier. You were placed on standby as uh, one of the players. Uh, any regrets that you are not part of the team currently? Yeah, definitely. You know, because I want to be in the team, but I also understand I wasn't ready mentally. You know, being being uh, being approached by different clubs, and at the end of the day, you know, something seems to seems to delay. And um, like the, the the one I actually wanted to go in the championship, um, spoke with the coach and everything, and well, they couldn't get Chelsea to pay some of my salary, so which is um, frustrating for me, you know. And uh, I think mentally I wasn't ready. And when the coach called me to explain to me, listen, you've not been playing um, games. Uh, we don't know what you're doing yet, so you're gonna be on standby. I totally un understood. Then I agreed with with him, you know. So, but I'm I'm sure I'm sure the boys are, are great. I'm sure they've worked hard, and you know I'm rooting for victory today. Okay, you supporting them to go out for victory. What really motivated your choice for Turkey? I'm sure you mentioned something briefly there. I'm not sure I heard you very clearly. But what motivated your choice to go to Turkey? And a lot of Nigerians have been asking the question. And uh, if you can't get into the Chelsea first team, are you looking in the nearest future to perhaps move away permanently from Stamford Bridge? Yeah, it's, it's an option, you know, but... Um as you know, there are lots of players in Chelsea and not everyone will have the opportun opportunity um, to play. So for me, basically, it's to find a place that I will play regularly, a good team. You know, it's not... I don't want to come to Turkey on a permanent deal because I know it's... I want to be out there. I want to come on loan. I might leave in January. It's not sure, but I have that option, you know, so... If something else comes, something better, then I'll be living in January. All right, thank you very much, uh, Kenneth Omero, uh, for spending some time with us on the breakfast show this morning. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right, we wish you all the best in your career. Thank you very much.